Hi, if you haven't heard of me, my name is Brett Warniers. This is my new painting, Strawberry Moon. Whoa! Now, everybody has their own perspective and their own interpretation of artwork. So I want to talk about what I did that day that eventually led up to this magnificent moment where I witnessed this cosmic event feels like uh, some sort of shadow landscape. I'm actually more interested in hearing what your perspective is on this artwork and what it makes you think of. My plan that day was to hike to a place called Green Knob. Now there's like five Green Knobs in North Carolina. The hike I had planned that day was 10 miles and I was here for it. I was so excited, I was so stoked. I had never been to this place before. I had absolutely no idea what to expect other than that I was gonna be in the forest, in the mountains for a long time and I was well prepared for it. When I pulled up, I immediately realized that there was not gonna be anybody else on this trail. You can see why they call it Green Knob. Everything was green. Absolutely everything. Literally everything is green. The ground, the trees, literally everything was green. Wow. There was even this super cool set of roots that made perfect stairs on the trail. There was something really magical about this location. That is definitely the entrance to a witch's cottage. So I keep walking. And I get to the top of this hill, and I, and I continue walking, but I notice that the trail branches off into multiple different directions at this point. And now, there's no blazes, there are no signs that tell you which way is which. You are at your wits of navigation. So at this point, when I got to this majestic overlook on top of the hill, I decided that that was actually the end of my journey. Now statistically, almost all solo hikers do not disappear when they venture out into nature by themselves. However, I'm one to always try and beat the odds, so I turned around. Hiking alone is one of my favorite activities. It's where I feel most fulfilled. It's where I feel connected with nature. It's also where I feel real fear. Um, I can see how it would be very easy to get lost in a place like this. The big reason that I, I know where I'm going is um, it's actually because of these marks on the trees right here. Somebody intentionally made those to keep the rest of us on the right path. There's something exhilarating about that. And there's also something incredibly rewarding about making it to somewhere when you are by yourself, when it's just you there, when it's only your energy, your motivation, your decision to keep moving forward, and you make it to the top of something or to the bottom of something anyway, it's a powerful feeling of accomplishment. So I'm heading back down the mountain. I was kind of down on myself. I probably could have made it. I'm feeling a bit defeated. But eventually I get to my car and I start it up and I go to another spot that's nearby that's very dear to me. It's actually the first waterfall in North Carolina that I ever visited. So to me personally, it's a really special spot. I have a lot of fun there. There's some hidden nooks and crannies there that are just glorious. So it gets dark, I get in my car, I'm ready to go home. It's been a day, I would call it a successful day in nature, but I still felt like I didn't find what I was looking for that day. And as I'm on my way home, I notice this brilliant pink light coming from between the trees. And of course, like a normal human, I was like, oh my God, it's definitely aliens. So I stop at the next overlook and it's the moon. fascinated by the essence of our planets in this great celestial dance precariously balanced while flying through the universe. It was so astoundingly beautiful that I, I couldn't put it into words so I just had to paint it. 
This experience also made me realize just how small we are. The distance between us and the moon is greater than anything that any of us could have fathomed, and yet it's minuscule in a cosmic scale. When I did get home, after petting my cat, I got right to work on creating artwork of this. I did a practice sketch, I thought, oh, we'll just have some fun with this while it's still fresh in my mind, and I just didn't stop. <laughs> If there's one message I really want to share with this artwork, is to go on adventures. Make that decision to follow your desire, even if it feels uncertain. Take a chance, push your limits, yet still be aware of your own boundaries, and tell someone where you're going. Put yourself in situations where you must rely on your instincts, and let your inner guidance show you the way and take you places. Those spur-of-the-moment decisions, that trust in your inner wisdom, is guiding you towards something absolutely incredible, something that we could never even imagine. When our inner voices are heard and we trust they're guiding us to something incredible, I found that as long as it feels good, as long as the thought excites you, then it's pulling you towards something that's absolutely astounding that only our inner wisdom can know. Living in the present moment like this, just fully aware of what's around us and inside of us, that state of mind will bring us to some really, truly amazing places, and all it takes is trust within ourselves. With this artwork, I really wanted to create a feeling of connection with the cosmos within the cradle of our terrestrial wilderness. Now I'm going to explain some of the specifics and how I did that with the imagery of this artwork. In this artwork, the main feature is the moon. On Earth, the strawberry moon is the first full moon of summer or the last full moon of spring, around the time of the summer solstice. It's a magical time of year. All the land is bursting into life. Flowers are blooming everywhere. Even the nighttime breeze across the highlands is warm, making it a fantastic time for nighttime adventures. My goal here was to create something that inspires others to go on these endeavors, no matter the time of day, as I've been inspired by exploring the expanses of nature with my friends. This painting shows my spirit friend Ivester and her luminous cat buddy, overlooking the glimmering lights of the city, harnessing the magical energies of the shortest and warmest night of the year. But I brought it to one of the overlooks up here on the Blue Ridge Parkway where it was, where it was originally inspired. This is one of those paintings that just had me completely transfixed from the moment I began it. It's the second painting with my character Ivester. She's a sassy southern horseback rider of the highlands, as tough as she is compassionate for all the beings who live up in this rugged landscape. She appeared to me on a solo hike one year ago. Every so often I still hear her voice as a message of strength, and it's what she ruggedly symbolizes for me ever since I had this encounter. Ivester for me has kind of become a guide in that sense since the first time that I encountered her on the Ivester Gap Trail. Her personality has kind of stuck with me because it was instantaneously crystal clear. I knew exactly who she was in an, an instant, in less than a second, by hearing her voice once and getting a, a sense. After this experience, I had really found myself wondering as to whether this was just an imaginary experience or if this was something that was truly mystical. And to this day, I still wonder about what exactly the difference is between the two. She's the star of a painting that I did in October of 2020 titled Ivester's Gap, which is based directly on the experience in which I encountered her. You can read more about that one on my website. <laughs> One of my goals with creating characters, or in not just in Quantum Soup, but any character that we develop, is that we're actually creating a cartoon spirit. It sounds kind of weird, and I've never heard anybody talk about this before, but think about Bugs Bunny, for example. Bugs Bunny has an essence to him. We all know exactly what his personality is. Even after just watching a single Looney Tunes episode that has Bugs Bunny in it, we understand who Bugs Bunny is. Have you ever watched so many episodes of an animated show or any TV show where the characters' voices will actually start to repeat themselves in your mind? Just me? Well, <laughs> there's an essence of who this character is that sticks with us throughout our daily lives after we've disengaged from 
from consuming the show. We'll kind of interpret information in a similar way that the character would. Their personality is clear to us and it gives, it influences us in how we actually filter information and then make decisions from that information. Ivaster is a, he's an expert when it comes to identifying plants and which ones are edible, which ones are going to heal wounds, which ones are going to help you build a house. She knows all this because she's been raised with the land and it inspires me to learn the same thing because I sit in front of computers all day. Except for when I do cool stuff like this and go up on the parkway and film things. Ah, ah, ah. So having her spirit, her essence, her character in my mind is something that really gives me a lot of inspiration and motivation to, to get out there and learn about these things and make an effort to understand and just experience the wilderness in a way that I might haven't had have before, such as picking a leaf off of a plant and just deciding to eat it. One time I got sick doing that. Make sure you are identifying plants correctly yeah, I wanted to do a nighttime scene because um, I've taken a lot of trips up the parkway at nighttime, and one of my favorite things to do this past summer was to just gaze up at the sky, look at the cosmos, and all the intricacies between each of the constellations just uh, hung up right above the, the lights of, of civilization. It just absolutely fascinates me in an incredibly unique way. The uh, cosmic ley line patterns that we see used here, I've used those in a couple of artworks and designs, but where they first came and showed up to me was in this painting, Future Retro Dreams, where I put them in the stars and they, uh, 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 I really like this design, this feeling, because it emphasizes the existence of the zodiacs. It shows the connections between the cosmos that affect us all on subtle energy levels. It's amazing how these connections are created by us humans over time, and a lot of them are eerily accurate. So I added them into this one as well, and I did a little bit of refinement. The Zodiac over here is entirely um, Quantum Soup Zodiacs, because I figure that the show takes place in a different planet. Uh, they probably have a different system of astrological signs with slightly different but same traits as our common zodiac. I really wanted to give the essence here of, um, you know, this might be, this might be Earth, this also might be somewhere else. And so I wasn't really specific with the flowers. I love cats. People actually notice the cat first. I have, I have noticed that. It wasn't my intention. <laughs> so I love drawing cats in nature because I feel like they're just such profound little creatures of, of our world. Isn't that right, little guy? Oh, you're beautiful, buddy. I love you. I love you so much, Bo. Uh, I'll do anything for you. You're literally the best cat ever, and I love you so much. I'm gonna pet you later. Okay, bye. And yeah, that's Strawberry Moon. This is an artwork that's uh, incredibly special to me. It's uh, it has a, a, a character who is um, Ivester is a character in Quantum Soup, and I've written a couple stories that involve her, and I'm really excited to share them because she is a uh, she's a powerful presence in my inner realms. And I think that part of my work to bring goodness to the world is going to be in providing cartoon spirits for people to relate with and understand and to be inspired by. These spirits are here for a reason. They're here to tell us something really important. And they show up in very subtle ways. And Ivester is a character who showed up in a very clear, obvious way. And it's important to me to tell her story and um, you know, let her be, let her be seen by the world. Within our imagination, we have this vast, infinite playground where we can do anything that we want. We can create anything that we want within this imaginary world, and we can formulate ideas as if it's like a, like a sandbox for what we create in the real world. And the fact that every single one of us has that, that inner world, that inner space where we can create things with infinite numbers of possibilities is something that's fascinated me for my entire life. It makes me question what is our actual physical reality versus what is imagination. Strawberry Moon to me represents everything about the mountains and the stars that fascinates me. 
and it also weaves together two worlds that have captivated my imagination for years, the Mystic Blue Ridge series and Quantum Soup. But this painting is something that's had me completely captivated for the last two months. So much so that when I finished the still art, I felt that it wasn't good enough, so I, so I made an animated version, which that is for another video. No, 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 no.